Hi everyone, welcome to Cats Creations Live on a Friday night, where tonight I am going to walk you through how to use an evergreen wreath form to create a deco mesh inspired design using this sign um, that is trending pretty popular on both Pinterest and Etsy. If you like the sign, I believe it came from Andy, A-N-D-I, Lou, L-O-U, designs on Etsy. That's where you can find the sign. Um, that's where I bought it a couple of years ago um, and decided I actually had to find it first. And so we're going to design it around this. So um, we're using a 24 inch evergreen form from Hobby Lobby. Um, we're using red and black buffalo clad fabric mesh also from Hobby Lobby as our design theme inspiration. And I'm hoping to kind of take this to um, my own design, my own twist on a fairly popular design. So the first thing that you're going to want to do, obviously, is have your 24-inch um, evergreen form done. And we're going to take this and we're going to fluff it first. Because right now, the way you buy them, hanging on the wall, this is 18 inches wide. It's probably about 18 inches um, high. So this is technically a 24-inch wreath form, which means that it's been packed for shipping. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take and you need to fluff, which means what most people don't do um, when you're buying things from a retail store, especially artificial, is nobody fluffs. You know, they might just go like this and um, that's about as good of a fluffing job as we're going to get. Um, this wreath actually contains both an inner and an outer circle with the fake uh, pine branches on it. Next week, I'm going to be showing you how to take this and creating a different version of this non-deco mesh um, to make it look a whole heck of a lot better than it does if you were to purchase the wreath form um, directly from Hobby Lobby, which means we're going to be adding to the existing design to show you how you can take something simple and create something wonderful from it. So you've got to physically go all the way around the wreath and pull every little piece up. So this way you know exactly what you're working with. I always say that by the time you're finished, it should kind of look like the um, Outback Steakhouse blooming ending. That's just what it looks like when roughly we're finished. Um, this wreath form, is about $11.99 at Hobby Lobby, less the 40% off you can get. Um, I believe if they are still all available at the end of the year is usually when I make my purchase on, because then at that point, I think they go to like 80%, sometimes 90%. Sometimes you can get them at other places. But um, I like the 24 inch because that's basically the size that I'm looking to make by the time we're all done. That one's just kind of weird going by itself. And the reason why we need to fan these out is if we're going to place deco mesh in them and kind of use them like a little bit of a wreath form, um, we need to be able to find a place to put the deco mesh at. So it needs to be fluffed. And you'll see how big and fluffy it actually gets. Let me make sure these are all on my page. All right. There we go. Okay. Um, so if you guys want to replicate this design, once you're able to find all the supplies, just click the share button down below. That'll share this video to your own Facebook page. It's a lot easier to find. That's what I did early on. If I found designs that I wanted to try my hand at, um, it's so much easier to find them. That way because I wasn't posting a ton on my Facebook page. If you want to be notified when I go live, which is every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific and every Friday at 5 Pacific, um, make sure you click the like and follow button below. And then that way um, you should be notified when we go live. So this is actually probably the longest Part, but I wanted to show you the before, what it looked like before we got started. 
<clears throat> if you are new tonight, and this is your first time catching uh, me on Facebook, make sure you let us know. Hi, I'm new. Also, let me know where you're from. A lot of times I find new people that are actually in the same city or close by uh, from where we live here in Southern California. But you also find additional crafting people um, who are catching the Facebook Live with you as well. So let's see what this looks like. A little bit more to go. So as you can see, I am taking every little branch and moving this around. Because sometimes they're folded, sometimes they're curled. And then this way we can see really what we're working with. A couple more and we're all done. Okay, so there we are. Now we are truly at 24 inches. And how do I measure? I am literally measuring from the end tips of one branch to the end tips of the other and we are sitting right at 24 inches. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 10 inch deco mesh, the black and red buffalo plaid from Hobby Lobby, and these are cut to 20 inch pieces. Let's see. I might just take the advice of somebody I was talking to earlier who said, take them and put your cut edges to the center and then ruffle them. So you get a ruffle slash different kind of version. And we're gonna go around and we're gonna put these around the inside first. See what this looks like. Oop, need to make sure we can get that in and twist it. So we're gonna cover the base now with the fabric mesh, but not 100% complete. So we're just kind of going to the middle, to the middle, and then we're gonna ruffle just right up through the middle. And I'm gonna put the cut edges side down. Let's see if we can squeeze one in here. Because I still wanna be able to see the pine branches through my design. And in all honesty, I couldn't tell you right now how many it's going to take because all I did is take a full roll of deco mesh and cut them all to 20 inch pieces. And we will see how many we need. So what that's doing is it's helping us confine the cut edges. We're kind of confining them to the center which means that there's no edges to catch and to fray. So we'll see how this goes. So it's going to be a little bit rustic, a whole lot kind of country, country Christmas. So this particular mesh from Hobby Lobby is one of my personal favorites because it's super soft, but the downside, well, part Christmas tree, but it frays a lot because you cannot cut it with a um, wood burning tool. Well, Holly, the sign is from Andy Lou Designs on Etsy. Mm -hmm. A-N-D-I-L-O-U Designs on Etsy. Great. And if you're looking things up on Etsy, Etsy has no spaces. I didn't know if you guys knew that or not. Everything is just kind of all smushed together. I'm hoping at some point that will change. We can put spaces in there. So I'm just making sure I'm giving him two or one complete turn on that. And then let's see. So far I've used one, two, three, four, five. Hi, Faith. She said, hi, chat, everyone. This is one of my favorite wreaths to make. Have you made one like this, Faith? This is my first one doing it like this. Not deco mesh on an evergreen. I've definitely done that before. But um, taking this design 
and trying to do something new with it. Okay, so technically, could I go here? I can probably squeeze another one in. Why not? Let's just put it in there. And we shall see what we get. So I'm just kind of making the cut ends meet in the middle and then curling that. And then, as you can see, I'm just taking a section of my evergreen and just twisting it. Because we kind of want it full, but I also know that I didn't want the cut edges to lay super flat. Because then that's where we run into the um, braids. So seven on the inside. And let's see how many we'll get to the outside. So to the middle with both of them. And then ruffle. And I'm actually going in between every single one of the top ones I put in with one of the bottom ones. So like right in here, there's one here, one here. I'm gonna put one in right in the middle, right at the bottom. And you can use evergreens, uh, especially in light of our supply shortage. You can use evergreens as a substitute for your work frame. And depending upon your design and how you choose to cover it, um, it could work as a great substitute for a work frame wreath. You're just going to have the evergreen pieces in there. But sometimes you can use that towards your advantage. Okay, so here's another one. We're going to go right in between these two. No pipe cleaners to wire on. Right. <laughs> nope, just rotary cutter, your deck of mesh. And then we're just ruffling them into like a little bow tie. And kind of placing them right in the center of our top sections. Almost exactly what we would be doing if we had your regular wreath frame, I guess. So I did one there. I'm actually going to put one right in here because if I didn't, there'd be a huge section in here without one. Goes to the center. And then stretch. I wanted it to feel full. I wanted it to feel like there was some weight to this. Now we can go back to our middle. What do you guys think? Pretty simple so far. Cheryl said, I love the fold over method, no frame. Right? Because we're containing those cut edges. You just got to make sure you get a good twist on your mesh. And then always find like the perfect piece where you have like a up in a lower piece of your pine. Uh, Jill, yep, she bought the mesh at Hobby Lobby just uh, last week. This week. This week. Yeah. Our Hobby Lobby, believe it or not, this was the last roll of the Buffalo Flag. So, and then it's not really a cruffle, it's just a foldover, right? I guess of... we would call it a foldover method. Yeah. Because that's technically what we're doing. We're folding it over. So that it's just... It's holding the bunches that we have in here. I'm looking to see where I have space. So I have about four and a half pieces left. Half, why half? 
because I had just like this little, I don't know, 10 inch piece, 12 inch piece left. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to waste it. I'll just push it in there. Faith said she had made several of these last year. Oh, really? Yeah, it makes for a beautiful leaf. Yeah, it does. This is my first. Did you ask about the cost of the leaf tonight? Uh, I think this one's going to run right around 107 by the time we're finished. Not including shipping. Not including shipping, no. Nope. And I think that was my half piece. So I'm trying to do all the full pieces. And I'm almost, I'm like two pieces away from meeting the, um, where I started, which is right here. Right, so now she said, I think I may be switching to evergreens for a while. Definitely works when supplies are limited. Yes. So jump on that. And this method works really good for that deco mesh that has a tendency of fraying quite a bit. So this way it kind of gives you about a 50-50 blend of evergreen. So if you're looking for something kind of rustic, um, this would work really good for a winter wreath that does not have to be, you know, bound by Merry Christmas. Um, there's a really cute sign out there that says comfy and cozy are we. Um, you could incorporate that. It does not have to trend towards Christmas at all. Uh, but this one is definitely going towards the Christmassy side. And uh, the mesh is cut to 19 to 20 inches. No, this one, honestly, exactly 20 is 20. Inches. Yeah. So I have a couple places where I want to add my last couple little pieces. I have two spots. And I'm going to fold in, fold in. I'm going to make sure these fold up. I didn't want to do crumple because that takes a lot of mesh. You know, that's 25 inch pieces. And um, I didn't want to do that for this particular design. I wanted like a 50-50 blend. And then I have a short little piece that's going to go right here as filler for me. Because sometimes you just get a little bit of mesh. So, as you can see, Nikki said hi from the UK. Hi, Nikki. Uh, I want to attempt your deco mesh wreaths. Where can I get the plaques for the center? The sign? The sign? So the sign is on Etsy. Yeah. Um, you'll have to check those and see if they ship to, to the, the UK. UK. Right. Right. Um, the sign is from Andy Lou Designs on Etsy, and I'll spell it out. Okay. So perfect. This is plush, thick, and full, and look at how gorgeous that is. And that is, how many pieces did Kat use? Um, I want to say 19, because this did not have, well, now let me think about that. Seven. There's no way to do six and 12. And this was like, yeah, this is pretty darn close. This is like 19 and a half pieces, because I had exactly 11 inches left. And I had just this one weird bare spot where it's not too big. It would have been too big to put a full piece of our mesh in. I'm trying to think why that's, oh, why it's making that weird sound. Um, normally it's a piece of wire to the bottom. Okay, so look how gorgeous that is. What we're gonna do next is I'm gonna move this off to the side. Um, we are going to add in um, Ashley, let's... Uh, Arvina, it took a little bit more than one roll then, right? What? Uh, one full roll of deco mesh. Just one. Just one. Just one. Yeah. So I'm going to take my sign. I'm going to attach my pipe cleaners to it first. I'm going to go ahead and put that on. We're going to do this one a little bit different. We're going to build the bow. And then we're going to go back in and add uh, ribbons and half bows and some embellishments to the rest of the design. So I'm gonna take these black pipe cleaners and I'm gonna use my staple gun. I'm gonna attach those right to the bottom of my sign. Just like that. I'm trying to keep them as even as I can. 
I actually took the sign earlier today and sprayed it with a clear gloss. Because I noticed when it was sent, um, it was kind of a flat, like a matte finish, and I wanted more of a glossy finish just so that if it's exposed outside to the weather, um, I wanted it to be able to last a little longer. So this is gonna go right to the inside part of my frame, right in here. Look how pretty that looks. I'm gonna do the same on the opposite side. I'm going right in between, right to my frame. right to the center. Our bow is going to be at the center on the bottom so we can have longer tails. Okay, look how beautiful that is. So far that's all we've done. Okay, so now let's build the bow. So this is all what happens to evergreens though. All that tinsel that is just magnetically never wants to leave no matter how many times you clean it. So this is all up, out, and in the trash. Okay, ribbons for tonight. Look how gorgeous this is. We're trending with the red, white, and black theme because we're gonna let the evergreen be our green. So this is from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if it's from this year or a couple of years ago, but it's all Christmas ornaments. This was found in the A box. I don't know if it's still here this year. We're also doing this red, white, black, and gray um, in the G box, also from Hobby Lobby. So those two are going in. We are doing our black and white plaid, just to kind of pull the black and white from our sign, because I'm not going too black, just little pops of black. And then there should be one more also. Um, we're doing black, white, and red stitching. We're gonna be using this Joy ribbon, which is from Joann's. The stitching ribbon is from Craft Outlet. The black and white plaid is from Fifth Street Studios. The red Swiss dot with the fur edge is from Craft Outlet. Let me make sure. I'm not using, oh yeah, let's see. And then we're gonna be using this white with red snowflakes is gonna be our top. I'm gonna to go ahead and mix these up so I know which order I wanna pair these two or like how they're gonna lay on my wreath. I want them like this. Nikki, I don't think so, we'd have to look it up. She asked us if Hobby Lobby is Hobby Craft in UK. I don't think it is. I don't know. To be totally and completely honest, I don't know. I'm gonna do it like that. Maybe like that. We'll see. I think I have enough of the snowflake to get me all the way through. So we're starting with this and then we're gonna end with the furry Swiss dot. So let's see how that all plays out. So we're gonna start with the Christmas ornaments and because we're putting this ribbon at the bottom, we can go a little bit longer. Look, splice. Hate splice. Why? Why? Can't use that. I don't like to see splices on my designs. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is dovetail the end, which just means fold your wired edges together. And then your destination point's always going to be at the end of your wired side. So depending upon how far up you come on the fold, uh, determines how deep the V will be into your ribbon. So there is what we call perfect dovetail. And I'm gonna do this one at, let's go 14 inches. And I'm gonna use my Bodabra. So when you use a Bodabra, you always start with right side fabric facing you. Wherever you gather it, you're gonna twist it. And that twist part 
is what goes right in between the little springs on your bodega. It just holds it. And then you're gonna flip it up and around, do your twist again. And this time we're trying to measure the length of our loops. So the way it is for me standing here creating the loops, I can put the, the center right down the 10, and then I can stretch this out to see where everything falls. And I think I'm gonna go six inches for the loops on this because we're going a little bit bigger. Carrie, uh, she can talk about the white Christmas tree on the door at the end of the video. So she can pull it up for you if you want and ask some more questions. Thanks, let's go this one. She made the tree, that's from last year. I think. Last year at Christmas, yeah. I think? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then we're going out 14 inches. So this one's going to go all the way out right here. We'll dovetail this one again. And go ahead and cut this. Okay, so this is done. Okay, I'll finish with that. Now we're gonna go with this black and white plaid. Do the same, we always start with our dovetail. And this one, we're gonna do it 12 inches. We're gonna bring it in a little bit. Here, the same thing. We've got our twist going. This one's gonna be at five and a half inches for my loop. Did you guys notice we're doing three two and a half inches on this one? Didn't know if you guys caught that. So there's five and a half. And five and a half again. Should be right about there. But let's always double check. And then out to 12 inches. Right here. Okay. What do you guys think of the color? Would you guys have used the same colors on yours? Or would you have gone more traditional red, white, and green? I fell in love with this ribbon. So I was like, oh, I have to make that this year. So it's all like the Christmas trees and just like different versions of plaid, diagonal plaid, argyle. And it's super soft. It's almost feels like flannel, which makes that nice. And this one, I'm gonna go to 10 inches. Let's do our twist. And then we'll go up and around for a five inch loop. So we're kind of coming in on the loop size about a half inch every time I add one, right to five. And right to five inches. And then remember this one's out to 10. The reason why I said I don't know about Hobby Lobby, I think the black and red and white changed from the A box to the G box. And that's why I think the one on the bottom might be a little bit older, or this might be, I don't know. Because it's doubtful to have both red, white, and black be in two different lettered boxes because the way Hobby Lobby um, displays their ribbon is they put the ribbon that is all designed to go together in the same litter box to make it easy, easier to coordinate. I think we said, yeah, we're gonna go with this. It feels like sweater ribbon, so it's super nice. Very soft. Feels like I'm cutting up sweater. And we're gonna do this one at nine and a half inches. 
and this is going to be a four and a half inch loop. So I always just kind of estimate and then I bring it back and double check it to make sure I'm right where my measurements need to be. Because I don't want to be like kind of eyeballing my cookie recipe and be like, hmm, this looks like about a cup. There's certain things like adding extra chocolate chips that you can get away with, but you can't add extra flour or eggs. It has to be like almost right on the money if you want good cookies. Okay, trimming that down. And then we'll use this Joy Ribbon. This was from Joann's, I want to say, yeah, 2019. So I've had it for a while. I love it. It goes with just about everything. This is going to be nine inches for the tail length. And it's going to be four and a half inches as well for the loop. And because we've already done the bottom one, if you just put your finger in the bottom, put your finger in the top and pull, you can make sure that they're both the same size. And we'll do it here as well. Give it a really good pull. And then this we know needs to be at nine. And this will also be a different fluff because this bow is going to be at the bottom. All the tails need to filter down to the bottom or just slightly out to the sides. So we can't, it has to be a different kind of a fluff. And now we're going to do our snowflake. And then we'll finish off with the fur. See if these will work. So eight and a half inches is my tail length. We're going to do four inches for my loop length. Neat. There we go. I feel like we're going to have just enough, I hope. I hope, I hope, I think we will. Right there. Make sure this goes out. Wow. Did you know I guess you're looking for the reads on the website? This one? Yeah. Look for the sign. Just look for the sign, Virginia. And because go. Because you can't take a picture of the wreath because it's not made yet. Because I don't know what it'll look like. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just have a picture of the sign up there. And if you just go to catscreationsandmore.com and click on the new product collection, you'll find this one right at the top. Should automatically default to this one at the top. And that one's the end of that ribbon. Okay. So here, furry snow. I love this ribbon. It's one of my favorites too. I love things with different textures and like this, what do you call it? The sweater one and the one that's almost like a felt. Yeah. Okay, so let me go back. We're now at eight inches for this final one. And this is gonna be a three and a half inch loop. Bring this one in. Here we go, bring it in a little bit more. The stack is getting full. Okay. Three and a half inches out to eight. Right about here. <laughs> that said, y'all made my night, waited for, waited all year for you to start Christmas. I know, right? 
I told Steve yesterday we went to um, Lowe's and Lowe's all had all their Christmas out and they they had some of like their inflatables yeah. that were playing Christmas music and it's just such a nice feeling. I was like, go do wherever you need to go. I'll just be in the Christmas section, just sitting here listening to Christmas music. So my favorite part was when you found eggnog at the store. <laughs> <laughs> right? Eggnog early. That just makes Steve a happy camper. That's the start of the season. For you. Okay, so let's put, let's get red. Okay, so we are going to pick up all of our bows. And as I'm picking this up, I'm compressing the loops down, and then I'm just going to move my fingers aside so I can get a really good grip on that ribbon. I'm going to twist it. That's the pumpkin spice latte. Yeah, that's true. Um, I know. He, he was so nice. I told Steve the other day, I'm like, you know, it's been a long time since you brought me just like little unexpected surprises. So today he brought me pumpkin loaf bread in a pumpkin spice frappuccino. So it's kind of nice. Okay, so let, let me do this just on the board just to show you so that when I go to add it to the wreath, it just goes right on the wreath. We're not gonna really have to adjust it very much. So this is an 18 by 24 inch cutting board, three quarter inch thick. Um, you can use a cutting board. They kind of get a little pricey if you just go to your home improvement stores and look at their pre-cut lumber, a lot of times you can find 24, 24 by one inch already done, and then just pick up an inch and a half to two inch like a screw C-hook, and then you're good. So here, because our bows are our bows going at the bottom, I'm going to take all of my tails, and I'm pulling my tails all to the bottom. Well, in this case, it'll be up. Cynthia asked a good question. How much would you charge us for a bow like that? Ooh. You know what's so funny? Because the only bows that I've made and sold have been the tree topper bows. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to look at the cost of the ribbon and then how much of it I'm making. Because I don't want to overcharge. I want to make sure you're getting like a really good deal. That could be at least 15. Yeah, something like 15. 15. To 20. Well, tree topper bows go like 20 to 30. Again, yeah. it just depends on the ribbon. Because if you're using really expensive ribbon, like Dupani ribbon, that's like $15 a roll, then depending upon how much of it you're using, you've got to charge accordingly. So. And so then what's the Christmas movie yesterday? You guys are so Christmas funny. Christmas in Connecticut. I love Christmas in Connecticut. We also love it happened on Fifth Avenue. I love anything that's an old black and white. So I'm just taking all these and moving my tails down. So do you guys see what I did there? I just pulled all the tails to the bottom of my wreath, just like this. And so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn it sideways so you guys can see, I'm going to separate my loops. <clears throat> so I'm doing the black and white, and here's my ornament. On the opposite side of keeping the ornaments on across from each other and then the black and white across and then I'm going to take the um, plaid Christmas trees and I'm just gonna let that one sit right to the center and I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna split those go back to the other side and go opposites so I'm gonna go high with the plaid low with the joy here same thing, split them, go to the other side, and split them. So they're kind of, by the time you're done, they should all like um, not be directly next to each other. So they kind of will toggle in between. And then I'm gonna open the bottoms and then start opening the tops. Amy and Charlotte. Uh, I think you have in the public group a tree topper bow tutorial, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. I think. 
Yes, I'm positive we did. Because I think we did treetopper bows. Yeah. Okay, and then so doing the same. The so here's the other. So now I'm going up on the other side, opening all my loops up, making sure that now they fill those spaces. Look how pretty that is. Super pretty. Okay. So here, let me do this so I can actually see what I'm doing as well. Trying to get in and really inflate those. And then you do the same thing for your tails. Just kind of pull them out. So you have different colors, different textures, different patterns. So that's going at the bottom of that wreath. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it comes on the opposite of how it went on. And then we'll just kind of do a last minute little fluffing once it actually is on the wreath. There was a like how you did this bow with the flag down. It really shows off the bow more. Yeah, it depends on what, well, on this one. Okay, so here's why this wouldn't have worked. I would have had a big bow up here, and then we have loops interfering with the message. Because right. the, the words on this pretty much take the entire sign from one end to the other. Therefore, it warrants having our bow. i got to find my pipe cleaner. Here's my pipe cleaner. It warrants kind of putting the bow at the bottom. You don't always have to, but on something like this, it almost feels like it needed to be. Yeah. Nikki, all the ribbons are wired. Yeah. So I'm just attaching this to the center, and then I'll just, I don't want to pull too hard and collapse everything. But now I'll just move everything around and start opening. Oh, she said your bows are always fabulous. Oh, thanks, Sue. But I don't think they intimidate me as much as they used to. Because all of a sudden, one day you're making them, and it just clicks. And you're like, wow, that looks like a pretty decent bow. Okay. So if your loops won't quite open because you have pine branches kind of popping up. Just push the pine branches out of the way. I'm trying to aim for as close to center as possible. Okay. Let's put some fluff in those so there's some life in them. Just by doing this, I'm putting a little arc back in them so they don't lay flat but they kind of have some elevation to them, and it even works for the ones at the bottom. Just need to get that one under. Okay. Looky, looky. Let me see if I can get this one. I'm trying to make it match up with the little berries at the bottom. That is my goal, anyway. Okay, let me hold it like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. I never know where he has the camera focused. So, now we're gonna go oh, yeah. in. Yeah. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna add all those ribbons around the outside. So what does that look like? That looks like an awful lot of this. So we have the same, the only ribbon I did not use in here, I think is the Joy ribbon. So we are gonna be alternating the black and white plaid with the ornaments with the plaid trees. Now, we are going around and adding these. You can add them wherever you 
kind of feel it's calling for a bow. Doesn't need to go on top of the deco mesh. It's entirely up to you. As a designer, you can put it on top of the deco mesh. You can choose not to put it on top of the deco mesh. It is entirely up to you. And when I add these, I'm kind of pulling the loops towards me. So they kind of fan out. Oh, it's a beautiful little set. I really like the way the green pops. Oh, thanks. Pops yeah, it just makes it for a nice, kind of like an evergreen, but without the traditional evergreen look. Because I've never done this, um, we'll see how many. I cut this for what I would have normally done, like, um, what is it, like 12 to the outside. That's kind of how I had this one figured. So we'll see if it works out. We may need to add more. We may not use all of them. Okay, we are back to the trees. We might want to even come back in and add some up in here. It's entirely up to you guys. You decide. When you're designing, you don't have to do exact. You don't have to follow the formula. You can make it just however you want. I purposely chose to deviate away from the standard wreath that the sign is probably infamous for because I wanted to do my own thing. You guys should know. I do my own thing. I was trying to find a place to put my two and a half inch ribbon. Well, because I think it's okay to use a design for inspiration. I don't think you should really copy it 100%. But try to find a way to make it uniquely yours. Thanks. I had my tie below. There we go. And so this is gorgeous. Like this is one of my favorites that you have made. <laughs> I think I hear. I think we hear that like all the time. But even for us, like when we're doing it, because I don't ever replicate the wreaths, um, it's always super exciting to see how it's all going to come out. Because you might lay all your ribbons out, and you're like, "Oh, these look pretty." I just don't know how well it's going to look, like when the design actually comes together. Will it work out the way we want? For me, yes. The two and a half inch are all 14 inches. That's a 14 inch. I'm sorry. I did not tell you that. Yes, these are all 14 inch pieces. It looks like this will all work out perfectly. So, and that even works out because I didn't really want to put a bow. Like, I don't want to put my ribbon tails below the bow because... No one's going to see it. Okay. So I think the only additional will be if we, and I think, oh no, look, there's four. That's nice, because then we'll also add these to the top a little bit around our sign as well. So that worked out good. Okay. Then I'm going to kind of come in here. I'm looking at what is directly below and I'm trying to pair that not with something I have directly below that. So I'm going to come in here because I have the pine tree and the plaid directly below this space. So I'm going to take this. Oops. And we're going to fan that out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
Deborah, that's something Kat can probably talk about in the private group. What's that? She asked, what do you think about the Star Seller badge on Etsy? She'll never get like, she'll never get to it because two out of three, she does two out of three, but she's always late on shipping by a day, too many orders. My that's personal tough, opinion, though. my personal opinion, I don't like it because it rolls your entire shop into a 30 day calendar. So let's say for example, and you can't, yet you could do the very best job as a designer and your customer absolutely loves the wreath, raves over it, but for some reason, they just don't feel like giving you a five-star five rating. They just think, you know, five stars is perfection. Uh, it's a four-star. So it takes just 30 days of what you've done and rates it. So it's great for people who are just starting off that maybe only sell one item and the person rates them awesome five stars and their shipping was on time and that automatically makes them a star seller but then you have people who've been on Etsy for years that can't hit star sellers now because there's no such thing as 100% perfection. So I personally don't like it. Um, I haven't voiced my personal concern directly to Etsy. Um, but if you read the community forum, there's not an awful lot of happy people there. So I know why Etsy's doing it. They're doing it to help try to drive additional sales. However, that's not helping the people who have been in business for a while. You know, imagine if you had Target, who's been open for years, and then you have Joe's Retail Store that opens 30 days. Target gets held accountable for one month's worth of sales. And like I said, there's no such thing as perfection. So I just think that the ratings are skewed. Now, if they average them over the life of the shop, great, but they don't. So that's just my two cents. It's just not something I'm a fan of. They're not doing it to help the sellers. Mm -hmm. They're kind of doing it to help Etsy, you know, because then they really promote the people who are star sellers and not people who are legitimately great sellers. Does that make sense? I know it makes sense. It says a target percentage for star sellers, ninety five percent in those three areas. Right, but it's based on a thirty day calendar, which means that you could be a star seller one month, and the next month you have a customer who does. I mean, you're not going to reach out to them and say, "Why did you only give me four stars when it, you said this was like the best rate you've ever had?" Mm -hmm. um, some people you can't do that, and then it automatically tanks you, and then you're not a star seller anymore. So that's just my two cents for it. Okay, let me get back to doing this. So I added four to the inside just to kind of give it, look. So this is it before we add the half bows and embellishments. We kind of just took the ribbon and brought it up to the second layer. And now we're doing half bows, which are inch and a half ribbon cut to 18 inch pieces. And so these are the colors that I'm doing. So I'm going to pair the stitched with the plaid trees. We're gonna do the um, snow edged to our black and white uh, burlap. And then we're gonna take the red snowflakes and put it on top of our ornaments. So a half bow is when you take and you bring your edges together and you take it up about two inches from the top and then you pinch in, okay? And then those are gonna go directly in the center, like so. And you're going to have to always right side one, but then you're kind of giving it a little, like an awareness bow to the inside. So let's see what this looks like all the way around. Here we go. here. And then we're going to fan this out. I think I want to fan it the other way. Let's fan it this way because I want it. Let me flip it. 
I'm going to move all this so it flips <clears throat> the opposite way. We're going to move these down to the bottom so that this flips the way I want it to flip. Just like that. Just like that. I like that a little bit better. Because when you're looking at it from the front, it looked great when I was doing it all the way around the outside. But the sad thing is, is that's not how we're going to be looking at it. You're going to be looking at it from the bottom, staring straight on in. Okay. Flip. And then fan that one. I guess we could do the same on this one too. Let's do that. I'm going to take the whole thing and pivot. Pivot this around. Deborah said, is your half loaf cut a 10 inch? 18 inches. 18 inches for the half loaf, for the inch and a half. Yes. So let me, the side ones can stay side, but the top two, let's actually get those to fan down and out. I just got to move the evergreens out of the way like these so they don't make your ribbon do weird things. There we go. There we go. Okay. This one to this side. We're doing this. So um, so far, what did I say? This was 12, 13, 14, 15 pieces of, or 15 strips mm -hmm. of the two and a half inch. And then these are all going to depend based on what colors go with what. So I just added, I had 12 of each already done. So four of these, four of these, four of these for a total of 12, two and a half inch. And then the same with the inch and a half, I had four, four, and four. And then we added the three additional to the inside for a grand total of 15. That's where I'm getting that 15 number from. And then we're going to do these on the outside. Hey, Rita said the reason is absolutely beautiful. Thanks, Rita. Yes, this is on an evergreen base. Yes, it is. Just something different, especially with supplies being limited. It's just something different so that you can still have an evergreen look and feel. Uh, Deborah, no, we're not on YouTube live at the same time we are on Facebook. We're looking into that, but we will post this on YouTube later tonight. Probably. Yes, it will be on YouTube later tonight. And just fluff in multiple areas all at the same time. And just going around and adding these to each space where we already have the two and a half inch. And like I said, if any of the evergreen branches seem to be in your way, just move them, tuck them in, push them out of the way. And just get that to where it looks the way you want it to look. Yeah, this video will also be on our on this public page after we finish as well. It'll go to replay. Yeah. And you can just watch it all over from the very beginning. Okay, right underneath here. Let's get these knocked out. See, as you can tell, based on how I prepped my materials, I wasn't even factoring in doing the ones on the top into the center ring. But I think based on the size of the sign and the dimension of this wreath, it almost called for it to be a little bit. We needed to fill in here. That would have looked really weird. I think had we left that just blank. And my glue skillets are ready. I had 
just melted a whole bunch of new glue because it gets a little low after a while. That's the nice thing about the glue skillets is um, it stays liquid while you're working with it. You can always add more to it. You never have to clean it out. You just kind of watch what goes in it, meaning little pieces of pine or mm -hmm. pine cone or plastic. You can fish those out with like a skewer, but um, it'll all harden once it cools and then you can store it wherever you need to. plaid. This is the one piece of plaid that I am short. So this goes, let's see, 18 and 18 is 36, so all the way out to the end. And a little dovetail the end, because that just gives it such a nice finished look. Uh, dude, you can get the glue skillet on Amazon. I want to say... for six inch collector skillet. Um, yeah. yeah, I believe so. Six or seven inch. I'm like trying to match it with my cutting mat. I think I, I want to say it's a seven inch skillet. It could be six inch. It comes with a lid. So when I bought mine originally from mm -hmm. Surebonder back in the day... Um, they've now subsequently, um, a company has come out and actually made these. They just call them an electric skillet. I think it's a seven inch electric skillet. Um, it doesn't have a temperature gauge. It just has like little indicator lines. So I keep mine yeah, one up from, all the way up. yeah, it's like if you were to go all the way up, mine is one line before all the way up. And stays nice and melty, so it makes for super simple gluing. Okay, open. We just have this one and the white, and we're done. And then we'll start our little bit of embellishing. We won't go overly crazy, I promise. I still want to be able to see everything. A little bit of everything. Okay. So, flip it open. Pesky tree. Okay. All right. So, it's all just going to have to get some love once we get it up on the door. Because it's a fairly large wreath. Okay. So, I have a couple little embellishments that we're going to add to this. Not a lot. We're not going crazy. Um, we are going to add some jingle bells. Because I think it needs to be um, jingle bells. So, I have... I want to say these are an inch big, maybe three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to put these um, around my white with, oh, I should have gotten my glue gun. Um, uh, Jill, yeah, the two and a half inch ribbons are on top of the deck of lunch. Uh, sometimes. I didn't always do that. This is where I should have brought my glue gun out. So I'm going to add these two right where I have just the white with the snowflakes. So we're just going to add a couple jingle bells. So we have one here. So I'm just using a Dollar Tree skewer stick. And just 
tapping the tail end. And just setting that right in the center. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Can you guys see that right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I was doing. Just adding a cute little jingle bell right to the center. I think one, two, three. I thought I had another one. Nope, got all four. Um, thinking that if we added it to the center, it's going to lose. It's going to be lost in the center. And I don't want to do green because it's not the right color green. Okay. Um, this is what we're missing. Hi, Deborah. So, we're going to add some more to this root. We are going to add some red berries. I was like, what happened to all my embellishments? This would be cat put the bag away so that I could work on what we're doing up here. Now where am I going to put this? I'm going to add some in here. We're just going to kind of pop the berries. Just a little bit all the way around the design. These are just like a burgundy and a cherry red. And I'm just attaching these into my evergreen. Just to break up all the green. Let me remove this one. So I'm just going around the outside, just adding these in just little bunches where you have clumps of your evergreen just kind of bundled. I'm just adding some little touches of red berry to kind of break up all the evergreen. Like right in here. show you what I meant. So let me spin this one around so you can see what I did over here. Like what I'm saying is wherever you have the little bunches of evergreen clustered where it's just a lot of green We're just breaking that up with the berries. Just so it feels like it was part of the original design. So I'm going inside around the outside bottom. So up in here. There we go. Oh, 
almost finished. And these are from Hobby Lobby. I just like them because they they look a little bit more natural because they have the two-tone color to them. So you have like a darker burgundy and then you have that pop of that, the cherry red. Anthony, on a scale of one to five, this is a 10. Oh, thanks, Anne. Turns out I love the burgundy color. Oh, that's super nice. What's that? You said, I love your style, cat. You always seem so cool, collected, and calm. I'm glad I seem that way. I think just because for me, you know, like people have things that they naturally do to help relax themselves. Some people find painting extraordinarily relaxing. I find just working on designs like this, this is my relaxation point. So this is a pick that you can get from Hobby Lobby because I don't like it to look like the fake evergreen. We're gonna add some of the thicker tips in to where evergreen is. She also said your designs are always beautiful and well done and you don't get in a rush to finish, even in private group. No. Because this is, I mean, aside from the fact that I have all my materials cut, this is pretty much like how I would do my own designs. So I'm just bringing these in so that we get a different texture than just those static dry branches. Mm -hmm. So I'm just mixing these up. And this is exactly what I would do if we were making this from scratch. I would be coming in and adding these different branch layers so it doesn't feel like you just bought, what did you just go into Hobby Lobby and get that evergreen base and slap that together? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> so, um, but we didn't slap it together. We just took it to a whole new level. So we're just adding that to the inside. So you can actually, you get quite a bit yeah. on here. Great chair and shirts and shirts and embellishments are the finishing touch. They are, they're my favorite part. Kathy said, hey, first time watching, beautiful. Thank you for watching, Kathy. Thank you for joining us, Kathy. Where are you from? So this is where we're just doing a quick dip. And then we're gonna just let those kind of fall where they would. We're doing this for rails. You can use these and follow the existing evergreen that is there. You can add them to the outside pieces. So then it just, to me, it makes it look not like the, you know, $11.99 Hobby Lobby base. Mm -hmm. And just one of those picks is enough to do the entire design. Okay, from Virginia. Wow. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Let's move this around. So now I'm just picking the outside ones and just like wherever we have those evergreen picks where the branches are kind of sticking out, I'm just kind of adding these right to the center. It kind of breaks up your eye. So you're not looking at a tinsel are kind of looking at an evergreen piece. And I know this kind of seems like overkill, but it honestly gives your wreath a whole new dimension. So look at what we've done around the outside. So all those places where you have the pine bunches bunched just um like watch let's see if I can take this and spin this around okay so this is weird because I'm doing it here so here's all these weird pine branches right look what happens when you just take one of these and just add that right into the center now your eye doesn't see that is like hmm that looks weird 
you're like, oh, okay. That's what you did. So I'm just placing those around the outside where we have those little pockets of our pine so that it doesn't feel like the standard Hobby Lobby mesh base. There are two more pieces and Make sure this one's all done over here. I'm gonna take this one. When's the hell? When's the best time to start on a holiday release? Uh, Christmas. You should be starting yeah. now. Because if you're buying your supplies from your retail store, they will all be sold out. You won't find anything in the shop by Thanksgiving. There will be very little left. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the stuff you don't really want to use. I'm going to take these off and just recycle them into my design. This one, maybe not so much. And she said, Kat said, most of your picks up, I have a hard time cutting them apart. You know, the same Make sure you get the right, a good cutter. Uh, you know what's funny is, yeah. So, um, let me see what the name of my cutter is. I actually bought a really nice cutter this year. What is it called? It is an eight inch Musata, M-U-Z-A-T-A, -A, eight inch industrial clamping tool. So that can pretty much cut through most of what you need it to cut through. Really nice, other than that, I just use really inexpensive pliers. Obviously, there's a white and red ribbon by Bo missing the bell. Oh, did you put a bell on it or bell on every one? You just put just the on. white. Right. So just the ones with white. Ooh, no, she's right. There is one down here at the bottom. Oh, good catch, Sarah. Nice catch. Okay. I feel like I'm icing a cupcake. Right here, right on the outside. Awesome catch. And then we just added a pine cone right into the center. I'm gonna see if I got one more berry. I know I do. Because you always buy two. So I'm gonna take some of these and just kind of stick them like right in here. I'm just going to add this one right to the center just to give it something. Just felt like it was missing something. Okay, I think I'm done. Let's see what it looks like on the door. Let's put this back in there. I know you said somebody had asked. Yeah. I'll show you the um the Christmas tree. Check out what the dimensions are too. What? Dimensions of the wreath. Of this one? Yeah. Once it's finished. Okay. So I'm not measuring from ribbon tip to ribbon tip. I'm measuring from the tip of our branches because that's a true size and we're still at 24 inches. Okay. So right at 24. Now this is a standard size door for your front door. So this will determine the how 36 big. inch width. Yes, this is 36. So always make sure if you are taking pictures of your wreath using an interior door, your interior doors are not 36 inches wide. They're only 24. So if I was to put this on a standard interior door, a customer might be like, oh my God, that's like a huge wreath. And then they get home thinking it's going to be a huge wreath because that's why they bought it. And it's like this. It has gaps on either side. Because if I put this on a 24-inch door, I wouldn't have any gaps. It would fit all the way to the end, end to end. So 
I'm gonna make sure everything is fanned out nice and pretty. What do you guys think of the design? Overall, do you think it worked out well? That's a beautiful. Carolyn, it's a beautiful first time I've seen you work. We'll start watching you for sure. Oh, thanks. She's always on Friday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Every Friday. Yeah, at 5 Pacific, 7 Central, 8 Eastern time. You guys have came out gorgeous. Thanks, Gail. Yeah, I just chose to flip it in red, white, and black. Because that's kind of what I felt when I looked at the sign. Oh, this is gorgeous. Sharon's a beautiful once again, Kat. We guys would love it. That's Everyone's true. a beautiful. It looks great. So we can barely reach these. Oh, just loving this wreath, what a difference it is from the mesh. We right. want this one out of the park. Thank Here's you. Up on adding the branches and other texture just hits the spot. Thank you for another gorgeous wreath. Yeah, so That's if you cool. look, here are all those little branches. So it takes it from that tinsel, and people would look at that and go, wow. So is this all like that? No. Just little touches here and there. So there you guys go. Let's see if we can get that one to be lay straight. Or lay some good tail. Okay. Well, there you guys go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys decide to take up the challenge and grab a 24 inch evergreen and make it your own. Pop in some deco mesh. You can use an evergreen for any season. You could use this for Valentine's Day. You could use it for Halloween. Um, and then always remember, if you're looking for a specific color, like, oh, wouldn't that have been nice if it was a black evergreen for Halloween? Spray paint it. Honestly, spray paint it, let it dry and then go ahead and use that as your base. So you can spray paint your evergreens. We've done that before. So um, if you guys would like to join me in my private group, we do two additional tutorials besides our Fridays and Sundays. Um, we do, I'm trying to think, Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific, and then also Mondays at five. And you can sign up for that and find out all the details at catscreationsandmore.com. You just click on um, sign me up for the private group and then it'll give you all the benefits that you get by being a private group member. So I hope you guys have an amazing weekend and thanks for joining me and I will talk to you on Sunday. Bye everyone.